we are going to continue with our discussion on the different dimension reduction techniques so previously we saw all these uh, full spectral techniques which basically performs the eigen decomposition of the full matrix uh, now but today uh, in this uh, particular lecture we are going to start with some sparse spectral techniques so they will actually uh, solve a sparse eigen problem instead of uh, eigen decomposition of the full matrix so essentially all these techniques are uh, looking to retain the local structure of the data so we are going to first uh, start with the sparse spectral techniques we will discuss uh, two sparse te spectral techniques in uh, brief and then we'll also talk about uh, two non-convex methods for dimension reductions so the first technique uh, the first uh, uh, sparse spectral technique that we are going to discuss today is known as local linear embedding so as the name suggests it's basically trying to retain the local properties and it's trying to find a linear embedding which is local in the sense that uh, it's uh, if we can define a neighborhood then the embedding will be linear in that neighborhood so essentially just like isomap it also constructs a graph representation of the data points and this graph representation actually is used for preserving the local properties so instead of the global properties it preserves the local properties and at the same time this preservation of local properties also helps to successfully embed the non-convex manifolds so how do we actually preserve these local properties or what is actually defined by the local properties of the data in case of local linear embedding they actually construct these local properties of the data manifold in terms of uh, rewriting the high dimensional data points as a linear combination of their nearest neighbors so that is how they are representing each of the high dimensional data points so each high dimensional data point is again just a linear combination of their nearest neighbors so that's how they are reconstructing them so in that case in the low dimensional representation of the data the goal of this particular algorithm is to retain the reconstruction weights in the linear combinations as good as possible so essentially each high dimensional data point is uh, determined or uh, as a linear combination of its k nearest, nearest neighbors which are determined by uh, denoted as this so if we can retain this reconstruction weights as good as possible then we can uh, build a low dimensional representation date of the data where the same reconstruction weights can be used for representing the lower dimensional data points so this wi are representing the reconstruction weights and essentially by representing each of the data points as a linear combination of its nearest neighbors essentially this method is fitting a hyperplane through the data point and its nearest neighbors so that's why it is assuming that's why it is assuming that the manifold is locally linear that's why it can fit a hyperplane and we are also going to see that uh, this reconstruction weights uh, that uh, it is trying to retain in the lower dimensional representation of the data so this reconstruction weights of um, the data points xi these are actually invariant to different types of transformation such as uh, translation or rotation or rescaling so just because uh, these are uh, these reconstruction weights are invariant to the transformations then any linear mapping of the hyperplane to a space of the lower dimensionality actually will preserve the reconstruction weights in the space of the lower dimensionality so in other words if we are really trying to retain the local geometry of the data then the reconstruction weights which actually works well or which actually were present in the linear combinations to represent each of the high dimensional data point at its, as its nearest neighbor and then they will be also retained in the lower dimensional space if we can retain the reconstruction weights we can use the same weights to uh, represent each of the lower dimensional data points in terms of its k nearest neighbors so it turns out that uh, finding this uh, representation the lower dimensional representation boils down to minimizing this particular cost function where again as we are seeing that it is basically trying to minimize the distance between the lower dimensional representation to its uh, linear combination of this weighted uh, nearest neighbors so 
the distance between these two must be minimized in order to find the lower dimensional re uh, representation. Now this is also subject to a constraint. Now this constraint is needed uh, to exclude the trivial solution which will actually render the y matrix to be all zeros. So this is very much needed. So we have to uh, follow this constraint in order to reconstruct, uh, reconstruct this uh, lower, lower dimensional representations. So it turns out that uh, the yi values which will actually minimize this cost function they can be actually solved using uh, another eigen decomposition problem. So we can basically find them by computing the eigenvectors which are corresponding to the smallest d non-zero eigenvalues of this particular matrix uh, in this particular in product. Right? So where i is again another uh, identity matrix and w is our reconstruction weight matrix. So of course w is also a sparse matrix. You can imagine that the data points that are connected in the neighborhood graph, they will have the reconstruction weight as the entry in that w matrix. Whereas uh, if the nodes uh, are not connected, if i and j are not connected, then they, these entries are set to zero. So this is how local linear embedding basically works. So it turns out that uh, similar to isomap, it also has some limitations where it can also fail if the manifold has some holes. And also this local linear embedding, it actually tends to collapse large portions of the data very close together in the lower dimensional space. And as a result, uh, it can actually suffer from some uh, problems where uh, there may be some rescaling issue. And these are occurring due to this uh, uh, simplified uh, covariance vector that we are using. So we are using this uh, very simple uh, constraint for excluding the trivial solution and this is also resulting in some sort of some sort of issues uh, or some limitations in the method so next we are going to talk about another sparse uh, spectral technique which is uh, known as laplacian eigenmaps so in the previous case when we talked about LLE we saw that the local properties were associated with uh, retaining the reconstruction weights in case of Laplacian eigenmaps, they actually try to preserve the local properties that are based on pairwise distances between the nearest neighbors. So previous one, each data point was being constructed by as a linear combination of the nearest neighbors. Now in case of Laplacian eigenmaps, these local properties are uh, based on the distances between the nearest neighbors, pairwise distances. So essentially it is trying to minimize the distance between a data point and its k nearest neighbors in the lower dimensional representation. So that is the goal of Laplacian eigenmaps. But this uh, minimization also happens in a weighted manner. So in the lower dimensional representation, if a uh, distance between one data point and its uh, first nearest neighbor uh, would be actually, um, the contribution to uh, the cost function will be more as compared to the distance between the data point and its second nearest neighbor. So if we can rank the nearest neighbors in a particular uh, descending order, then uh, the contributions of these uh, distances between the data point and its nearest neighbor will also follow a rank in the cost function. So the first nearest neighbor will have the highest contribution. So essentially it is actually constructing a neighborhood graph first which is again denoted as g so this graph actually connects uh, connects each data point to its k nearest neighbors and uh, essentially the edge that actually connects to uh, nodes xi and xj are two data points and these are also weighted based on a gaussian kernel function that we see over here so essentially if um, uh, the weight corresponding to uh, xi and xj if xi and xj are very close to each other then their weights are also going to be higher so this w matrix which is basically uh, the weight matrix uh, it is actually a sparse matrix because only a set of data points uh, each data point is connected to its uh, set of nearest neighbors so in case of Laplacian eigenmaps the cost function that we want to minimize is given by this again it is trying to weight the distance between two data points 
in the lower dimensional representations. So is this wij is the weight associated with the edge that connects yn and yj and assuming that they are nearest neighbors of each other. So as you can see that large weights basically uh, correspond to small distances between the high dimensional data point because of the use of the uh, Gaussian kernel function. So essentially uh, the difference between their lower dimensional representation or the distance between their lower dimensional representation will highly contribute to the cost function. So that's why these weights are coming into the picture. So then we can compute the graph Laplacian matrix which is denoted as L and it is basically a subtraction of two matrices. One of them is M which is again a degree matrix of W and uh, so if we subtract the original uh, weight matrix from M, we get the graph Laplacian. And this degree matrix of WM, it's actually a diagonal matrix where entries are the row sums of W. So this is how this uh, diagonal matrix is computed. And the graph Laplacian is nothing but the difference or the subtraction of the weight matrix from this degree matrix. And in that case, minimizing this cost function actually becomes equivalent to minimizing this quantity which is equivalent to minimization of y transpose l y subject to the constraint that y transpose m y is actually an identity matrix. So this is how the cost function is um, transformed into a new uh, set of uh, constraint optimization techniques. So in order to solve this problem, uh, it turns out that uh, the lower dimensional representation can be found by solving a generalized eigenvalue problem which is given by this particular equation. Right? So it involves the graph Laplacian matrix as well as uh, the degree matrix. And then we are going to find the eigenvectors corresponding to the smallest non-zero eigenvalues to form the lower dimensional representation, data representation. So Again, uh, the D eigenvectors, which corresponds to the smallest, uh, D smallest non-zero eigenvalues, they will uh, construct the lower dimensional representation of the, in the data space, uh, lower dimensional space. So next we are going to take a look into some non-convex techniques. So we are going to cover two different non-convex uh, techniques for uh, dimensionality reduction and the first one is actually a multi-layer autoencoder. So multi-layer autoencoders are basically feed-forward neural networks. Now it's actually a deep neural network architecture which has an odd number of hidden layers and the weights are also shared between the top and the bottom layers. So in this picture you are seeing an uh, example of such a architecture or such a multi-layer autoencoder where you can see that the number of layers are actually odd. So we have, uh, we can divide this autoencoder into two different segments or two different components. First of all, there is this encoder and then there is this decoder. These are the two networks. And uh, this uh, middle layer is actually uh, giving rise to this odd number of hidden layers. So this middle layer is actually going to represent the lower dimensional vectors of the data. So the input data is uh, denoted as x and the output data is denoted as x prime and they should be as close to each other as possible. So the network actually tries to minimize the errors or uh, squared errors between x and x prime. So this middle layer should consist of d nodes because we are trying to represent uh, the lower dimensional data with uh, d dimensionality d, small d. Whereas the input and the output data, they should consist of capital D nodes because that is the dimensionality of the data. And as I said earlier that uh, ideally X and X prime should be as close to each other as possible. So that's why this network is trying to minimize the mean squared error between X and X prime. So this lower dimensional representation is obtained from this uh, middle hidden layer. So it has uh, small D nodes. So when we actually uh, use some particular input uh, data point xi and we try to read the values from the lower dimensional uh, if we want to find out the lower dimensional representation of that um, uh, input data point then we have to read the output of the nodes in this middle layer so those will give us the lower dimensional representation yi for the corresponding xi 
and you can also see that in order to accommodate non-linearity in the data so this uh, sigmoid activation function is used in all the layers except in the middle layer where a linear activation uh, is used so this kind of uh, auto encoders have been applied uh, in a lot of uh, real world applications for dimension reduction one of the challenge with such auto encoders is to train them so um, th since they are consisting of a large number of parameters training them often becomes very difficult and needs a lot of examples so the next and the final method for this particular lecture that we are going to discuss is known as locally linear coordination now it's uh, somewhat uh, going to use the local linear embedding method at one point and uh, the essential goal of this method is to compute a number of locally linear models so instead of learning a single model it's going to uh, uh, like learn a multiple local linear model and then it will perform a global alignment of those linear models that it learns so that the global alignment in the global uh, space the data point can be represented as a weighted combination of these local linear models so it consists of two steps so first is to first step is to compute a mixture of the local linear models and it can use uh, an uh, expectation maximization algorithm to find this mixture of local linear models and the next step is definitely the alignment of the local linear models so and in order to um, do that they actually use a variant of uh, local linear embedding to obtain the lower dimensional data representations which is again utilizing this um, aligned locally linear models so this is sort of like the architecture of this uh, method and uh, essentially the first step is to construct m linear uh, local linear models so m data representations which is again denoted by z i z so imagine this is a high dimensional data again the representation here are the indices are slightly different from uh, that i am uh, explaining over here so each high dimensional data for each of them we are going to learn uh, local dimensionality reduction models so these are the representations uh, corresponding to z i z right so where j denotes the num uh, the index of the local models and also we learn at the same time the corresponding responsibility values r i j or here as it is represented as r n k for every data point this is uh, obtained and uh, these uh, linear local linear models can be actually uh, factor analyzers uh, so it can be a mixture of uh, factor analyzers or it can also be mixture of probabilistic pca model so this r i j values the responsibility values these are actually probabilities that determines to what extent uh, the data point xi actually corresponds to the model j so that is r i j or if we really want to uh, use this particular figure then r n k is actually denoting the uh, probability that uh, the data point x n how much it is explained by the model k so essentially all of the rijs uh, if we sum over all the different linear models they should sum, sum up to one so these are normalized probabilities and after it is done for all the data points after we learn all the local linear models then we are going to utilize uh, them together so this rij and uh, zij values these are going to be used to represent the data points and these are basically weighted by their responsibility values so uij is actually representing the uh, new data representations where each data point is represented by uh, a combination of uh, the responsibility values and the local coordinates rij times zij so this is how this responsibility weighted local representations look like so we are going to do it uh, uh, and then we are going to align them somehow to the global coordinates so it turns out that the alignment is actually being performed based on the matrix u which is again the responsibility weighted uh, representations of the data and uh, it's also using another matrix m which is basically represented by this uh, inner product in product uh, 
Ayan is again another um, identity matrix, whereas W is basically the reconstruction weights which are computed by local linear embedding. Now, it turns out that the alignment of the local models can be solved by uh, computing or solving a generalized eigenproblem. And that uh, generalized eigenproblem is given by this particular characteristic equation, where A is a matrix, which is basically product of M transpose and U, and B is the in product of U. So by solving this generalized eigenproblem, we can actually find the D smallest non-zero eigenvalues to obtain the uh, alignment of the local models. So essentially the D eigenvectors from this particular eigenproblem, they form a matrix which is denoted as L and this matrix actually defines a linear mapping from the responsibility weighted data representation U to the underlying low dimensional data representation Y. So the final low dimensional data representation is given by uh, the product of U and L. So essentially you can see that um, it is first uh, constructing a number of locally linear models and also finding uh, how they are explaining each of the data points. So that is the responsibility. And then this learned responsibility as well as the corresponding uh, linear models, uh, locally linear, uh, linear models they are actually giving rise to a reconstruction weighted data representation, responsibility weighted data representation, and this responsibility weighted data representation is they are further um, uh, going through a linear mapping in order to represent this um, uh, final lower dimensional data representation. So this linear mapping is again being learned from the uh, alignment of the local models as explained in terms of this generalized eigenproblem. So that's how uh, it is actually performing a non-convex optimization problem um, or solving a non-convex optimization problem in finding the linear coordinations. So we have seen a large number of uh, dimension reduction methods. Now a lot of these dimension reduction methods have been applied on different types of uh, single cell data sets. And next we are going to look into uh, some specific uh, dimension reduction methods that have been proposed later on like TSNE and uh, also a little bit of maybe UMAP uh, that are widely used nowadays for uh, single cell RNA sequencing data mostly to visualize them in two dimensions. So with that I'll end here today and in the next lecture we are going to look into TSNE. Thank you.